So um, I was saying to Ricardo that I was looking at this tidy models way to, to make ridge and lasso regression. And we were looking at the differences within uh, uh, these two. And uh, you say, as you can see, uh, it's better if I do this. Okay, uh, they are basically just the same. Uh, the things that you do is to add this um, argument mixture uh, equals to zero for the ridge regression and equals to one for lasso regression. Okay, so um, here there's a... Um, 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 so but, but, let, let, let's say that we, we've been through these things uh, uh, and the, the things that we wanted to, to see were the differences when we plot the um, RMC mm -hmm. and the R squared mm -hmm. and see the differences that is, there is still the noise, uh, background noise. There is the noise. Okay. Um, so uh, this this week uh, we said that we started with we will be starting with um, principal components, and um, so principal components is um, um, unsupervised. So it's a way to um, uh, analyze the data uh, and um, we, we in, in this case we use uh, um, the predictor uh, and uh, in tadi models we, we first specify the the engine so the model and the engine and uh, as we are still using this iter um, data set, uh, we are making a linear regression. So classical way to set the model and then uh, um, do the principal component receipt. Uh, principal component analysis uh, requires you uh, that data uh, need to be normalized, uh, all numeric, and so we have considered this fourth step, step novel, uh, which means that if you have any other values uh, that would be considered as uh, predictors, and this would be all for the uh, all the uh, new values, uh, which are nominal predictors, would be considered. Um, as all the others, and then uh, the, we, we do the step uh, uh, principal components to all predictors. The, the things that interesting is that the, the tuning uh, thing, uh, which is uh, in this case, in this step, PCA is a, um, as a threshold. So this threshold is tuned in this case. So the tidy models uh, does automatically selecting the best um, threshold. So... Uh, Federica, if I'm not yes. mistaken, that threshold in that step uh, PCA, uh, what it's saying is which is the cutoff, you know, on the principal component uh, analysis mm -hmm. that is going to minimize you know, in this case, minimize the, the, the metric, okay? Mm -hmm. Because for example, in the PCA, let's say that you have a hundred, uh, you know, uh, values, Groups, right? subgroups, yeah. Ah, okay. right? yes. high, di high, dimension, high, high dimensional, you know, what mm -hmm. this. So what the PCA does is that it reorganizes those features so that the variance, the variance is collected in the first in the first uh, principal components, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you want to, you know, you, you want to use for, for your model. You have to use that variance that it explains, you know, the variance in the response. 
So what's happening is, is that threshold, if I'm not mistaken, you know, we have to verify, but if I'm not mistaken, is yeah. that, for example, if 80% of my whole variance of the whole model is in, let's say, four uh, principal mm -hmm. components, uh -huh. then that 80% is going to be that threshold, okay? Uh -huh. That I'm going to use to then, you know, uh, predict the model. Let's say if then I want to use 85, in 85, mm -hmm. I mean, there are six principal components that explains 85% of the variance. So mm -hmm. I'm going to use that. So that's the tuning that is doing that, that parameter, okay? What is the optimum threshold percent of how many components do I need to then mm -hmm. minimize, you know, my, my cost function, okay, mm -hmm. in, in this case? Yeah. Okay? So, but, uh, you know, yeah. Ma ma make sure that what I'm saying is, is correct, but I, 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 I believe- It is. That, yeah. is, that, that is that is that uh, is that is in that direction that the threshold is yeah. is, is doing. We have a look at the at the function at the step function step PCA, uh, what is what the documentation says. And but um, just to mention that uh, the um, principal components analysis, as you said, uh, takes consideration of the variance of the variables. No, so it takes. Uh, a certain, uh, as you said, uh, amount the, the the highest values um, of variance for uh, the var for so the first variables they have the highest variance will be in the first component, and then subsequently the second component will have uh, the the all the variables with. Uh, the, the second level variance, let's say, and then uh, so on and so forth, and you decide how many components you like, mm, basically. So the, uh, the step PCA function uh, in tidy models, because you can use uh, PCA function. Um, so you can establish the number of components and the threshold. So in this case, the threshold is being tuned. So as a machine learning, so automatically select the best uh, threshold. And if we have a look at the threshold documentation said, it's a fraction of the total variance that should be covered by the components. For example, if it's 75%, that means that uh, PCA should generate enough components to capture this 75% of variance. Okay, and the, 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 the highest uh, va uh, variables, because you have, I don't know, 20 um, predictors. You decide for uh, five components. So you do 20 divided by five. Yeah. And then, so the first group will be component of the uh, predictors with the highest variance, highest uh, level of variance. And then subsequently, the second group, uh, a bit lower and a bit lower. So that you can identify in the first, usually you use the first two components. Uh, so that you can identify within the first two components how the, the variance, uh, is, is within the, the a group composed differently, no? With, with different predictors. So, okay. Having said that, um, we have uh, the, the, the model. We have the receipt, we, we build a workflow. So inside the workflow, this must be, uh, you know, because there's different waves to use this, you can simply do the fit. Or if you use a workflow, you add the recipe and you add the model, but then you don't need to add the data because your data are already mentioned in the receipt. 
So uh, when you build a workflow, you just add the receipt, add the model and the name of the receipt and the name of the model without anything else. So now you have your uh, workflow. And here is the interesting part. Because this is the threshold grid that we have, we tune it now initially. But then we want to see if I set a threshold grid like this one here. So it's a list, um, it's a vector, different uh, level of, uh, of different levels. Um, and uh, I use this um, inside a tune grid function. And then this tune grid function would be used inside Um, to select the, the select the best function to select the best metric. So um, let's say that we are trying to memorize these things, you know? So we have the model, we have the recipe, we build a workflow, and then we have this grid uh, regular function, which uh, lets us to um, have uh, uh, 10 levels of, of uh, different values, which there will, be, there will be our threshold. Okay, so new values, okay, to, to tune the things. Then I use this tune grid function. I put inside my workflow, and then I need to mention that I use the resamples. And what are the resamples? because at the beginning of the thing, I did the, the split and um, so I have this uh, uh, default CV cross validation that I have um, made and then my threshold grid. So inside this tune grid, this tune grid, Now we are doing tiny models, <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, um, so this tune grid is uh, um, searching this function, um, search for um, within the, the value that we have provided, so, our workflow, the receipt, the model, and everything, then the resample, so different, uh, um, our data set within uh, composed of different samples, and then this grid. So the tune grid will be searching these values within our resamples and our model specification uh, and everything. What are the those grid values? What are those grid values? So yeah. Is that a question? Is that a question for the group? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the is the is the values that you already had. You know, listed in in, in the in, in the list for the for the tuning, okay, which are yes. which are good, okay. Uh, one thing because I I'm I'm also following a meal, you know, for the for the for the tree uh, decision trees, uh -huh. and one of the things that also you know, depending on the result of this grid, sometimes you see that there's a good optimization in a range, okay, mm -hmm. of values, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to see. If it if it that if it that range of values, you can get a little bit more, more more, uh -huh. more optimization from from the model. So what you can do is go back. You know when you do the your first tune grid, you can go back and then set some ranges. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for example, right now the threshold is just in parentheses, right? So it's going to take from zero to one because those are the allow allow values. But then after you check the model and you see, okay, in this range is where the metric is really. You know, uh, go, going going down. If if it if it's RMSE or accuracy going going up, 
So what you can do is, is go back to that grid, you know, specification and then set the range. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the range could be, let's say from, in this case, it could be from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Maybe that's yeah. the range that you want the model to, you know, concentrate and then mm -hmm. put more levels to see if you can get more precise and more optimized the model. Okay, so it's, it's more of a, a, a iterative, right? Iterative process that you mm -hmm. check your metrics and see, okay, what can I do from the tuning grid? What can I do to then, you know, hunt in that range? Okay. Yeah. So, in fact, if we auto plot this, uh, this tune grid function, the result of this function, we have the RMC and the R squared. And so we can speculate and say, you know, this level of regular, regularization releases the lowest value for the RMC, but uh, as well as the highest value for the R squared. So, Again, if we're searching for the lowest, lowest value of, of the R square and the highest value, so we need something like less than 10 uh, and so on and so forth. So I have, uh, so this auto plot function does everything automatically. Uh, and if we do like tidy models, I think it's, uh, this auto plot function um, function um, is it's you can you find it in uh, workflow sets, ggplot2 and in tune. So we are interested in tune. And uh, they basically take it from the, the ggplot function, from the ggplot package. So you, he does uh, a selection uh, and the assessment uh, of the, the results of the tune function and uh, apply these things to um, make this plot. If I want to see what uh, is inside, if I do this, uh, I see that the my tune grid function it's made of lists. So we have all our resamples false. I've made ten false. So each fold uh, contains uh, my split and then all the metrics and some nodes. So the autoplot function automatically takes these lists, unlist them, select the metrics that we need for this uh, visualization and does the plot. If I do auto plot like this, I can see nothing. <laughs> Use method auto plot, but okay. So then um, if we want to see which one is the best value, for example, for the R square, and we use select best, the best penalty we found is belonging to the, this model 50, this processor. So this is the best model which releases the, with the lowest R square, uh, with the best R square. And then uh, um, we need to repeat the, the, the fit. So we finalize the workflow because now we have identified 
within our uh, cross-validation resamples. Which one is the best model which releases our best uh, value for the R square within uh, our examples? So now with, with this best penalty, so this model will be used inside the finalized workflow to repeat, and, and it does repeat the procedure. This last so final is basically again a workflow, but uh, made on this uh, processor one model 50, which is the one that we have selected. Then uh, we do this last fit of the model. Uh, again on train set and uh, we can see that he releases an object which is type glimnet and we have a list of lambda values all the possible lambda values because uh, as we have said lambda is the things is the parameter that we use for uh, making the adjustment. So for different lambda values, things change. So here is the list of all the lambda values applied to, these are the degree, the, uh, degree of freedom, and this is the, the, the percentage um, that we need. Uh, basically, that releases the value, the percentage, the percentage of, that we need. Then we need to, we we need to take this result, result huh? this, uh, this final, final, uh, last of final, last of final, 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 and we argument. And we argument. Inside, we put the Ridge final fit. This is ridge final fit. Should be. Uh, 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 This is the ridge final fit, should be lasso final fit maybe, not ridge. So we argument, what argument does? Do you know argument function? Oh, no, I'm, I'm like this. this for you. I think, I think there is a still uh, issues, I think, on Google. Jim, maybe noise. And... Okay, this arg argument function in the tune package. Okay, so basically what does is take a model object and uh, um, release the data, the information in a way that can be uh, applied to the test set. So basically we applied our uh, last fit and to the test set to finally see, and then in this case, calculate the R square. But if I do just a argument, I can see
okay? I can see that all the, the I have all the values, all my predictors that have been um, uh, used and then the bread function applied to the test set. This is the test set. In fact, is um, smaller than the other one. Then if I use the R square function and then truth salary and estimate PRED, he releases the uh, ANA value. I don't understand why he said here reach final fit instead of last last of final fit. Yeah, probably it's an error, uh, Federica. You know, it should be. I think it should be last because that's your final should... fit of the model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And the value is different. Right. Yeah. So I oh. have, yeah. Interesting, very interesting. <laughs> okay, let's go on. So um, we, we see this uh, um, as well on um, principal components. So, uh, we uh, select best, choose the, the best, and then we do the same things, finalize the workflow, and then fit the, uh, the things to run all this bit. Exactly the same procedure. Because once once you um, memorize the, the the steps, that would be um, even if there's a different ways to do it. Uh, because this this way to uh, to build a workflow is useful when you have more than one uh, model, more than one receipt. Um, as well as using the uh, workflow set for this thing. Well, it takes a while, apparently. I don't know. But so, why is doing? It? Uh, so, this. Uh, Mm, workflow this time there is a different result with PCA, which is different from uh, the lasso regression. And uh, so the threshold is between zero and one. This is the lowest value for the R square while the highest value. Uh, Federica, just a comment. Remember that the R square you want to maximize. The, to okay? have the highest value. The, the R square, you want the highest value. In the RMSC, you, have, you want the lowest. The, the lowest value. Okay? So you... right now, right now, according to that graph, is at the end. You know, where you have one, it's at the end. So you need, what, what it's telling us, you need all the principal components to optimize your RMS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so the, in, in other the, words, the one... is, 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 is not helping, really. It's not helping because usually you want a percentage of, uh -huh. of variance applied to a to a set of, of components, right? If you if you have 100 percent you have all the components. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so instead the, the R square is, uh, so we need the highest value 
uh, and uh, like within uh, like a, a bit more than 25 percent okay so now we did the uh, the tune grid of the PCA. And the auto plot should be just as the same. So the highest value is one. And yeah, there, the, there, there is a different story. Uh -huh. Because in the RMSC, you get the lowest point right about 85, kind of 85%. Mm -hmm. uh, percent. So that's, uh -huh. that's telling you something. In the R square, you get the highest values from zero, <laughs> which is no components, uh, to around 30, 30 mm -hmm. to 35. Okay, that, that line that you're seeing at the top, that, that's your optimum right there. So that, there's a divergence between the RMSC and the R squared. You have to see which one, which one you choose because they're telling you different stories there. Right, and things change it. Things change it when you, um, so it releases different values basically. So the, the best in this case, is from model one. And the uh, PCA, the fi uh, fi finalized workflow and then final fit. I have finalized workflow here. And uh, So again, I fit again the data uh, on train. So I finalize the workflow on the best threshold uh, right. based on the model that I found, just as the same as before. Okay, but th there's a step that is missing is the augment step. Remember what you did with the, with the linear regression, the rich or the lasso? that after you fit it, then you apply the augment to get the predictions and get yes. the estimate of, you, of your test set. Because mm -hmm. that's going to tell you if your model is overfitting or underfitting, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to apply that fit, that last fit, you have to apply it to the test, uh, you know, uh, data set. Yes, uh, okay. final fit and argument. And augment, correct. So that, that, that's, that's what is missing. Mm -mm. Yeah, I, I guess Emil, you know, ran out of ink, <laughs> out of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so if we do this. Mm -hmm. Yep. On the instant, it? And yep. then it there you go. This. Muscle tough. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, hey, good. So we do the finalized workflow on the model that we have found uh, to be the, the, the best, uh, the, the one with the best metric. And then we finalize, so, and then we fit it again on a training set to then augment to the test set. So you take the final fit and you argument on the test set. And this is the, uh, the, the data set with the pred function. If I just, just um, I, I should use a, an auto plot maybe, or I can just do um, a ggplot here. If I do a ggplot, 
with I don't know like um, say the the salary and uh, the thread And see that there is like some oh, why I, I should this is the bread you they're not put, exactly the you could put yeah. on a gm gm ab line ab line oh, just as is yeah They're not exactly aligned. Mm -hmm. uh, because this, yeah. Just, just, to make, just to make a comment, uh, those points to the right that you're seeing, uh, those could be outliers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, because as you see, more, most of the points are grouping in the AB line, right? Most of, most of them. Uh -huh. But those two points to the right that you see, the corner right, those could be outliers. So you have to investigate. You have to yeah. see you know, if that data is correct or try to see you know, how you're going to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because that's a moving, mo moving your, your, your model. Uh -huh. exactly but, uh, this, this is uh, exactly the same if I do smooth method. And then, no? No. That, that is your regression line from the from, ah. from your model. Okay. The A B line is the line that it tells you where the, the points are grouped. Okay, mm -hmm. where, where they, they should be grouped. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the smooth, the smoother is the line from your model. Okay. Uh, two, two different things here. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what uh, if if we if we do if we say that uh, um, so we don't have the values for the components in this case if we want to for example plot the the components we don't have them so we have made a principal component analysis and they have uh, we have uh, uh, prediction values released from the feed because so we have used. Uh, a model, a uh, model, a regression model with a step principal components. So this is uh, our linear model, but our data have been analyzed with principal components. While partial least square which is slightly different. And, um, you know, one, um, the, the, the recipe is the same for, for making the PCA recipes here. And the partially square recipe is, uh, is the other one. So, um, basically, in partial least square, it's a supervised analysis. So you specify that you are using, uh, you are doing uh, groups, but you taking consideration of the of your uh, outcome variable. So for this reason, it's supervised. So he makes the groups, taking consideration of the stratification of the salary, in this case which is our, the variable that we aim to predict. While in principal components is an unsupervised uh, analysis. So we do not specify the outcome. Uh, and we just consider the matrix of numbers and their variance. So we group them based on variance. While here in uh, partially square, we consider the, the outcome. 
So the same procedure, uh, set a linear uh, regression model, the workflow, uh, and then um, for the number of components, uh, again, we set a level, a certain level. We do this, uh, obtain this grid and we set the, the number of components. Okay, so which is different from what we have done here. In principal components, we have like this threshold, which is uh, in, within zero and one. So we have different percentages of uh, variance that we take consideration of. That would be our threshold. Okay. So again, tune grid, the same thing, and uh, select the best and finalize. So the, this is the, while the book, instead of doing these things, what they did it is uh, slightly different. Okay. So they call it the, to start principal component regression. And uh, there is a function which is principal component regression. And um, so, uh, so just, sorry, give me a second. I guess the dog got loose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Run for the hills. It's all good. Man, I, I, I need to get something like the hex stickers. You know, you are. You like this? You know, you, you're, 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 taunt, you're, you're taunting me, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. our, you know, our core, our core stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's a book club. Okay. So let me say that we have this uh, library partially square to apply, to use this function, which um, allows you to use this function PCR, which is the principal component regression. So the difference here uh, is you specify scale true. Uh, it does automatically uh, rescale your data uh, without using this step uh, as we have used in study models. And then uh, the validation as a cross validation. And then you do uh, run the things and, and see the summary. As you can see, there is a cross validated using 10 random segments and some, some results, which can be seen here with this validation plot. There is this function. Uh, the cross validation error is roughly the same when only one component is included in the model. And this suggests that a model that uses just a small number of components might, might suffice. So this case maybe it's less verbose. Uh, there, there is some background noise. Yeah. So basically you can uh, um, visualize the result immediately this way, but then it, it, the, the other one will be useful for uh, the adjustment. You know, we don't have tuning things here. Um, for example, if we do a subset train, this case is different. Okay. So we subset our data set to the train set. And 
here without study models, the training set is being made just selecting the number of rows. So I have uh, like um, replicated my, my rows, uh, doing a sample of the, of the number of rows that I want. So and then select them uh, by index, uh, indexing this uh, number of rows in my data set. And then predict my fit to, uh, you see, the, the test. In this case, this is used because the tests are the number of are the indexes of my data set. So the test set is different from the tidy model. The tidy model is our, the function test testing, release a, a, a data set. Instead here, our testing set is just a list of indexes that will be matching the, the, the rows in our original data set. Okay. So then we can see the result of a summary. So basically this uh, principal component regression applies the formula, scale the values and decide for the number of components. And this is the fit and we have this result for this data set X and Y. Why partial least square, which is, uh, as we said, uh, supervised analysis uh, is partial least square regression. So the formula specify the, um, our response variable. That's it. Let's see, that there's some chat. Uh, check the Broom package. Right, this, um, the Broom package is- um, For the argument. For the yep. argument, yeah. Yep. Yeah, usually uh, it's used, you know, to apply the, the, the fit and model and then extract the predictions. Yeah. Okay, in a, you know, in a, in, a, in a data frame, uh, you know, tidy, tidy data frame. Mm -hmm. Very handy. <laughs> but one, uh, plus, yeah, to uncover the method of details, you can run class. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. on the yeah. So if, if you have a object, a, a method, a, take that auto plot example. You were wondering about the help for auto plot as it applies to um, yeah. You're running it on a like a workflow set object or workflow. What you can do is run run class on the object, and and what's happening with with S3 objects is um, auto plot is actually plotting that class. So if you want to see help, type auto plot dot and then the class name and put question mark and, and you can see the help specifically for auto plotting that class of object mm -hmm. okay good. and that's good. a little bit of a distraction here but it it gets into the magic of s3 classes in uh being being used in in r mm -hmm. okay uh so because i've tried uh, making the the auto plot, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, um, so, sometimes you, you know you're lazy and they, they, you need to use just one function instead of uh, many other things. Mm -hmm. So when you don't need to uh, customize, you use the auto plot. Yeah. So there there are some auto plots that I've not been happy with like the one for confusion matrix. And so to build my own confusion matrix tile grid with colors, and I use uh -huh. mathematics so that the black labels turn white if the tile is dark, I, I built my own auto plot function for confusion matrix um, by <laughs> 
Um, there is autoplot.confmat. And I, I went to the source code, I forked it. And then in my own package, I, I took, um, well, in that case, the yardstick autoplot method. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I, I copied it into my own package and I added the colors and the prismatic things right. to my own autoplot confmat method in, in my own package. So when Good. I run autoplot on a confusion matrix item, I get the colors I like. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, um, Roy, One you, you can see here, autoplot.tune results. Go ahead and pick that. Yep, exactly. And, and yeah. now you can see mm -hmm. you can see the autoplot for tune results and, and the help right. for it. Okay. So I hope that the, the dot thing maybe helps you uh, in the future to find the the, the uh, parameters that, that you care about for uh -huh. tune results. Yeah, okay. kind of customize it, you know, to your own, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, uh, use. and yeah, if if you want to go further, you can make your own autoplot.tune results uh -huh. in some other package besides tune. Correct. And what's your package? Ah, yeah. Well, I've I've built my own miscellaneous functions under a, a Grumman lib package that's only in <laughs> GitHub. But it's, it's like my private set yeah. of uh, ggplot themes and fonts and and in this hey. case uh some of the yardstick functions nice um, like like you i i mean autoplot is okay but i want to do better <laughs> mm -hmm. right. yeah okay so but, uh, we have two minutes left uh, but this uh, exercise 11 uh, would be interesting to, to have a look at. So I don't know, like crime rate in Boston. And um, so he releases some, some values, for example, the very, you know, just to, to skim through, uh, see that this is the, the other set and this is the crime things in, uh, in Boston based by age and some other uh, variables and everything. So if you see uh, the subset selection releases like the, the num best number of variables would be nine. Mm -hmm. So you in this, for, for this data set, you will be needed like nine predictors to be able to understand a bit more about crime in Boston, for example. And um, this is um, what I was saying that the test, as you see the, the test and the training set in this case are indexes of the number of rows. And uh, here he considered the lasso with the glim net and then predict the lasso to, to find an average of 31. And the, the lasso coefficient. And if we do the lasso, Okay, this is the the, the, the value is slightly different. Um, and then and as well the prediction and again, I did that. Mm -hmm. 
So the, the number of components with the highest value. Uh, between one and two. So we can use just two components to have a good result. And then I don't know what this does. Work. And then I have not correct the number of columns. Anyway, so this is the um, uh, exercise 11. Uh, try to predict crime data in Boston. He uses the this HH uh, package, which I didn't know anything about it. Apparently it's for loops. And with this package, you can do this loop here. So which I've tried doing it, but I had difficulties because I didn't know that was this package. Because you use two different uh, indexes, one J from one to K and one I from one to another number nested within uh, the two. So, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you want to then we can have a look at these things maybe. Um, we have, when we have more time now is, we have reached top of the hour. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you, Frederica. Thank you. Okay, so next week it will be, stop sharing, will be. Uh, I'm on. You are. <laughs> I'm on, I'm ready or will be ready with nonlinear. Um, non I think uh, I'm is the gym, is the gym, the groomman hour, the groomman hour. It, I, we can <laughs> throw an hour. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be okay. I've, I've read the chapter. I've started the material and, and uh, yes, we, we can do this. I'm excited about Excellent. it. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So then we, we look for, um, more uh, volunteers, I think, for um, deep learnings and deep learning and unsupervised learning. Hmm. Because, yeah, so there will be two chapters. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Peace and love, everyone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>